How do we apply cross dissolves in HitFilm Express? Well, much like we applied the fades, we need to go across to effects, uh, transitions, video, and we want to choose dissolve. And now we've got three different options, which I encourage you to mess around with and experiment with, but the most basic one is the cross dissolve here. So we can bring that across and lay it across two adjacent clips. And this is when the cross dissolve will work best because it mixes the two clips on either side of the cut. So let's put it over here, for instance, and let's play through. Season, unleash dogs on the... So you can see it mixes the two images together. Now, I would caution against using cross dissolves at all unless they are for a very specific purpose, which can be either to emphasize a passage of time, like during a montage, or to really drive home the connection between two things on screen. Um, there is a connection here between the dogs and disturbing snowy plovers, but that is already pointed out in the audio, and it's also assumed or implied by just putting the two images next to each other. So a cross dissolve is really only relevant when that connection won't be obvious otherwise. Um, but this is a, just a good way for me to demonstrate what the cross dissolve does on the timeline. But I really wouldn't recommend using it that much. Um, so again, you can adjust how long the cross dissolve mixes on each side of the cut independently, which is more than iMovie can do, by clicking and dragging each side of the effect. And again, you can just get rid of it if you want to by pressing delete. A second way that we can create a cross dissolve in HitFilm Express is manually by first unlinking this audio and bringing the video onto another video track. And now if we extend the video a little bit and maybe extend this one as well, oh, we need to unlink it first and then extending this video. And now on these little lines that run through the center of your video tracks is the global opacity. And as we bring those that up and down, you can see we can mix the two together. So let's just undo that a couple of times, bring it back to 100%. And we can actually animate that opacity using something called keyframes. And if we hold down Command or Control on that line, when we get the little up and down arrows, we create a keyframe. And you can see it's already anticipating what we want to do. But that first keyframe we make, we always want that to be 100%. So while we've got the playhead on that keyframe, let's go over to controls, transform, and we want to go down to opacity, and let's just put that back to 100%. Now move the playhead to the left if you're on the incoming clip, and then move this slider down to zero. And if you've already made a keyframe to the right, when you move that slider, it's gonna make a second keyframe here. Now, if you hover over that keyframe, a little plus symbol appears, and you can click and drag the keyframe to the left and right to change the duration of that ramp from 0 to 100. And you can do the same with the other one as well. So now we've keyframed the opacity of the incoming clip. We've created our own cross dissolve. You can also keyframe the opacity of the clip below it by command or control clicking on that opacity line, but again, you're going to have to select the clip, go to controls, transform, and opacity, and make sure that one of them is 100. And then for the outgoing clip, you want to move the playhead to the right, and the second keyframe needs to be at zero. And now, again, we move that to the end of the clip, and move that first keyframe to where the incoming clip begins. We probably want to move the second keyframe on the incoming clip to match that of the one underneath it. And again, by moving to the right there, we've just lowered it a little bit, I think. Oh no, it's still at 100%. So now the two are changing opacity, but you can see these little black and white squares here, and that's because we're seeing through both video tracks um, at the same time. So if we had something underneath there, we'd see that as well. So that's a way we can mix more than two tracks at once. Uh, let's bring in another video clip, in fact. Um, 
let's move these two up to number three and let's put in a third track like that. And now you can see we've got three video clips all playing at once. And this is why cross dissolves are really meant for montages. They're for like really creative effects that emphasize connections and passages of time. Um, so they're really creative tools, but in very specific circumstances.